Okay, so I'm here with a review of the Paint Case 2.0 from Frontier Gaming, uh, a company based in Latvia. Uh, they do uh, a solution, uh, workstations, um, paint cases like this where you can just take everything on the go. Uh, relatively priced, uh, might seem expensive to start off with, but actually, what you get with them is actually quite a bit of kit and it really will change everything if you're in an area which has not much space you can't have a dedicated setup then this is definitely the thing for you uh, they did have an original one and this is the upgraded one this is the new one this is the paint case 2.0 uh, i think uh, on the website it was a about 90 English pounds uh, so convert that over to what you like uh, shipping I think to the UK was about 14 pounds took about five days so overall not horrendous um, but certainly this has made my life so much easier I had everything scattered everywhere um, so to start off with we've got case it's nicely varnished it's a smooth finish it is laser cut plywood, um, but it is really, really strong stuff. Um, it is uh, etched on the front as well with the Frontier Gaming uh, logo. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there is an option for you to put your own uh, logo on there and have it engraved yourself. Uh, just at the top here, you see two little finger holes. That's what you open the drawer with. And uh, they're held together by really strong magnets. Um, handle case on top, uh, yeah, it just does what it needs to do. It allows you to walk around with it. And it does come with a strap as well, so you can put it on your shoulder if needs be. That is a handy thing. Um, other than that, it is just a case to begin with. So what we'll do is we'll open up inside and we'll see what we have. So once you open it up, you've got a cutting mat that comes with it. Um, two bits of sticky tape either side, uh, you just kind of stick it to the, the back of the pull down section and that'll stop any kind of spillages uh, if you're painting or if you're cutting or doing any sort of modelling, it won't scratch the wood, uh, you can always take this off at a later date, however you don't need to have it on if you don't want to, you can put your own cutting mat on there if you want to. Uh, inside the case you can probably see, uh, although probably not very well, if I just grab the camera somewhere, there we go. So as you can see, there are quite a few drawers and whatnot on here. I've got at the top here, the Citadel range. I've got some army painter stuff in there. Uh, these I'll come to later. These are the custom drawers I built. Uh, as you can see, my bed wasn't wholly level, but uh, it done the job. And then over here, there's two drawers. This metal thing at the top here is a light bar. Uh, I'll go into that later as well. Uh, oh, more army painter stuff and my Vallejo collection. Now, when you pull the drawers out, you see it does hold quite a bit of paint. In this one, I've got what, two, four, six, eight, 16, 24. Yeah, about 30 odd paints in there. Uh, I can't be really asked to count them uh, properly, but you get the idea. Um, <clears throat> you just basically fill them up with however many you want. Uh, there are steppers in the case, so you can uh, customise this to how you'd like. Uh, however, the dropper bottles do mean you can't use the next one up. Um, but if you've got something smaller that fits in there, you can certainly have more drawers, and uh, yeah, that would be a great idea. Um, these cases up here, uh, they do come with lids. They are Again, they are plywood. However, uh, it comes with a lid. So... Just a standard plywood lid that keeps everything in there. And as you can see, I've got the brushes and somewhere down the bottom here are the really posh ones that I don't really use very often. Um, yeah, I've got some army painter stuff. I've got some uh, Citadel dry brushes and all that kind of stuff uh, as well. Some rubbish ones for glues and God knows what. But I've got basically every brush that I need in there. Now I've got the basing glue, I've got the scalpel, the X-Acto blade or whatever, uh, Gorilla Glue, the gel, 
Um, so we can put that back in there. The lid just goes on and you just slot it back in the slot. If I can actually slot it in, there we go. Uh, the top one, top drawer, uh, this is where the light comes in. Um, comes with uh, your connector for the light. Um, and also some divider boxes, uh, so you can kind of divide your trays up if you want to, you know, certain sections for certain things, like you saw in the last box. However, I don't need these ones at the minute, so let's just pop them back in there. Um, but moving on to the light, uh, if you do, the light is a built-in option, so you have to add it on. Uh, however, the cost of this really negates doing it yourself. Um, it comes in a metal frame, so let me just pull it out, uh, you basically hook it onto the case and you can space these out however far you like, it's tricky doing this with one hand, but you get the idea. Um, so it kind of holds there quite firm. Um, you then just connect the wire, uh oh, good grief, hang on a second. One handed is awful. Uh, oh God, I'm not even focusing on it. Right, um, come on. Yeah. Right, hang on, I'm going to have to put this down. Hang on a second. Right, okay, back again. So that's in. Uh, and then, as you can see, I've got the power bank. Uh, plug it in. Uh, whoops. There you go. And as you can see, it's quite a bright light. Um, you see everything in it is pretty illuminated. It is just a standard kind of, I think it's an LED strip in there. Um, but it is a metal, uh, like an aluminium surround. And you've got, uh, yeah, just the basic, I think it's quite a warmish light. It's not really a cool light, but it does really illuminate everything when the lights are off. I can't really show you it now because it is quite light. Uh, but it does a really good job of, well, illuminating everything on this cut in mat area. Um, you don't really get much reflection. This mat is very mat orientated, so you don't get the glare um, from the light when it is on, which is a great idea. Well done there. Um, so let's just put this back there. Uh, the other thing you will notice, oh, I've also got my brush soap. Uh, for the good old Windsor Newton. Yes, yes, I'm a Windsor Newton fan. Uh, and then I've got these little boxes which I made, uh, which if I pull out, oh, I will show you. Oops, didn't mean for that to fall off. Uh, at the back here, I do actually have the wet palette, so I'm put your wet palette, and it just kind of hides in there, and it does it really well. So if you put the wet palette in, you can cut, which is why I need the drawers really, or an elastic band would probably do well. Um, but yeah, so you can see there's plenty of ample space to put this wet palette in. Um, and you've also got some space at the top here, uh, which is why I decided to design my own custom drawers. Um, basically, the drawers you can buy from, you can buy all of these drawers, and including these ones as well. And they do come with, there are other drawer types as well, so you've got some uh, holders, paint holders, uh, figure holders, that kind of thing. Um, they are roughly this size, and two of those will go one there and one there, um, or one there and one there. Um, they obviously won't fit in the middle ones. You'll need one of the uh, spaces that has the actual framework in. Um, they do also have magnetic ones, so you can pop your figures in like one of these drawers, and it'll have a magnetic base. So if you use any kind of magnetic minis, they'll stick to it, so when you transfer or in this around, you won't actually get any movement from them. Which, if you're using resin figures, that can be a godsend because we all know how fragile they can be. Uh, onto these little drawers. Basically, I needed, when this goes in, you're obviously losing some prime real estate in terms of uh, depth of your drawers. 
So obviously these drawers wouldn't fit in here because the depth would be too too big. So I decided to design a, a drawer, basically. It's just a very simple design. Uh, these will be on Thingiverse. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, so feel free to customize it how you like. Uh, but basically it is just a box. There's nothing special to it. It's you can still see the string in. Yeah, um, yeah, my, my 3D printer isn't exactly dialed in great. So it just goes to show you, even if you haven't got a great 3D printer or your settings aren't up to scratch, you can still print one of these off and they do the job. Uh, you can see I've got the basin boxes from the Army Painter. They just about fit in these. Um the height is the perfect height for these basin boxes, so that's fine. You will have to squeeze the box out a slight bit, but with PLA, it's pretty forgiving, so you can do that. And you've still got space for a few other things if you want to put the basin boxes in here. You could also put the basin boxes down at the bottom here and stack them up. Um, if you've got like one of these boxes the other side, that would probably help things from moving around. Um, however, they do actually fit, and you can put, like I said, all your basin materials. This one is a thinner one than that. If you look, you can see that they are thinner, so there's two sizes. This one actually goes from the top because this one will go all the way through. So you'll be able to see there is like a gap there, and this one will actually uh, in. That one actually does fit. Okay, a uh, horrible quarter. Horrible. Uh, and then you just put the next one in, and like I said, they, they do fit. Like, there is give here, so even though this might be slightly out a little bit, um, you can always, I don't know why I turned it around, it has the same aspect, but it will, it will close, it will close. It has enough give there if that's what you want to put in there. Um, there we go, that's because I had the um, wet palette sticking out a little bit. Um, but you can customize it as well. So you don't actually need two of these. Like I'll put the link for the Thingiverse thing in this. I might have to modify this one just a little bit because stupidly I'd done a amateurish move. I decided to make the dimensions of that, split it in half. But obviously if you split it in half, yeah, you can't have two of that because you'll be out by like, I don't know, half a mil or something in the middle. Um, however, something you can easily do in your slicer, just kind of make it half a mil short or whatever. Um, but it does fit in, it's the right height, so that's okay. Um, you can try and modify it yourself, so you could have two mini ones if you wanted to, if you wanted to, um, uh, you know, put something on this end here, maybe, and link them together so you've got two little drawers. Um, it is handy because you can just put stack a few things in here and then anything that you don't want moving around rolling around you can put in the boxes uh, these boxes are made so you have got a tiny gap so you can pull it out quite easily uh, but also it stops things from falling out when you've when you've got it or if you tip it up so rather than have like the little windowy things here um i'd rather just have a full full-on plastic thing uh these took about eight hours to build but that was on a 0.3 setting um with 30 percent infill like i went crazy on it i just thought no if i'm gonna do it just do it so they were like uh, i think this one was about nine hours i think this one was about 11 hours just because it's longer it did take up the entire width of my build plate this was a 230 uh no it might have been two 220 i think i think it was a 220 width um, build so that's why I've got a little bit of curling because it literally took up the entire build plate um, So if you've got a smaller FDM printer these probably are not the best for you You're probably better off just getting some plywood and trying to cut a little bit out yourself um, But you can download this and get all the measurements for it or you can just measure one of these and cut it out It's entirely up to you um, But yeah, it's it's a great little thing. They do fit the Citadel pot so even the largest Citadel pots um, like that one, and like one at the back. Uh, they do actually fit the Citadel ones. Um, here, I think I've got about, well, I've got three, six, nine, 12, 15, about 18 to a rack there. Um, so 18 Citadel pots. Um, yeah, uh, overall, it's a pretty solid construction. Like I said, these are um, laser cut. They do fit to size, they are well made. It's a good quality, solid piece. Um, up here, you can see the magnets. They 
lock in with this and they are really strong i mean really strong they you know you can knock it and it won't come undone you do have to put some force to open the door um for it uh yeah so that pretty much concludes the review of the paint case 2.0 if you are thinking about getting one for this uh you know one of these i would say just go for it um like i've got about 100 paints stored in here pretty much uh with tools with brushes i've got my brush cleaner uh, i could put a mini pot in here you know like a wash pot but i'm really using this around the house more than anything else um you can put your basing materials if you want to do basing. Uh, you've got room to put any kind of electrical stuff up here, magnets, anything you want. Uh, it's a great case. And like with the modified drawers as well, you can put your wet palette in right at the back. So you can take that with you and still be able to put stuff in drawers and not have any wasted space. Um, yeah, if you've been waiting to pull the trigger on this, uh, there aren't many reviews of this. Um, that's fine. This is a review from me just using it on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't work for any companies. It's just a hobby. And I was skeptical because it was a Facebook advert that I saw this on, but I'm really glad I pulled the plug. And another thing to mention is this light, uh, the customer service from them is fantastic. Uh, I actually bought the case um, without the light. Uh, to begin with, and I was like, oh, I can go and get my own light and sort that out. And I thought, actually, no, it just makes sense if there's one that's custom fit for this case, just just buy it. It was like an extra £12. Then go ahead and buy it. Um, I emailed them. They put it on hold. They gave me a code for free delivery um, for this particular item because I wanted it as part of the case. Um, once I'd bought it and I then emailed them with the order number to link it to and they put it straight through and carried on. And like I said, it was sent out so quickly and done. It was really professional. Um, they're a really good bunch of guys. Uh, yeah, um, there isn't really much else to say of it. What I would say is I'd probably like to see them offer like a smaller um, draw uh, for people. And also if you are, I imagine a lot of people are going to want their wet palettes with them with this. Um, and so I'd like maybe an option for some shallower drawers that you are able to put a wet palette in and still be able to use space because at, at the minute they don't have that. Um, however, with 3D printing these days, you can just make your own anyway. It's not a problem. But it's just something I think that maybe the company might want to do in the future. Um, but other than that, I can't really see many downsides to it. Um, you can see your paints. Um, I would probably recommend just putting the colours of each paint on the dropper bottles, if you are using dropper bottles, that is, uh, just so you can see the colours more easier. Because uh, when you've got quite a few different shades in there, it can be a little bit difficult when you're just pulling out a tray. Um, but you just pull out the whole thing and put it down. It's, it's not the end of the world. Um, just a little tip there, really. Other than that, I think that has cleared this up. Um, the light is on the wonk, but that's because I haven't put it in. And I haven't spaced it out properly. It does get quite warm, actually. I have, uh, yeah, it does get quite warm. Um, but, yeah, it's a good light. It illuminates everything, as you can see. Um, yeah, go ahead, guys. Uh, if, you're, if you wanted a review, this is an honest review. I've bought this myself. It's come out my own money. No one's given it to me. Um, yeah, just buy it. It will save you so much space. Uh, I would say in total, this is maybe, I would say, fifth, it, it's it's certainly less than a metre. You know, you're looking at maybe 450 mil in length, probably 500 mil in length. So it takes up no space. And to get Far, to get 100 paints in that kind of space, plus all your tools, plus a wet palette, plus your brush cleaner, plus the, all the basing stuff, and a cutting mat, and a light, all in that compact space, this will change the way you work, and especially if you're in a place that has very limited space for a, for a dedicated setup. Yes, you can't fit an airbrush in it, okay. Um, and yes, you might be an avid collector of paint, and you might have 600 paints. I get that. 
Um, in which case, just choose the ones that you're probably going to need uh, and put it in there. Um, yeah, but now I'm kind of rambling on a little bit, so I'm going to end it here. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, just go to, I think the website is uh, www.frontiergaming.com. Um, I will link that website down as well. It won't be an affiliate link or anything. It will just be the bog standard link. And uh, just take a look for yourselves. Okay, well, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.